Hi, my name's Cody and you're watching Lunch Ride. You know, because of bad weather or our current situation, I've been riding inside a lot more lately on the trainer. I just recently discovered Zwift. Now, if you don't know, Zwift is a kind of virtual ride video game that allows you to connect your computer, or smartphone, or iPad to a smart trainer. And you can ride with groups or by yourself through some pretty cool places, some real, some not. And the coolest thing about it is if you're using it with a smart trainer, it actually increases the resistance on the smart trainer as you start going up these hills in the game. And then when you start going downhill, it backs off the resistance. So you actually have to shift. It's much more engaging and mentally stimulating than just pedaling and pedaling in a pool of your own sweat, just wishing it would end. Now, the problem that I have is when I use my computer, I can't get the computer close enough to see it or actually use it without creating this complex and very precarious structure of things I've just found around the garage. And most of the time, the computer still is a little too far away. Now, it has a companion app that you can use your phone as kind of a remote control, but it doesn't work. I t I'll tell you right now that it barely works. Now, I looked online and I found a perfect solution for like 250 bucks that puts the computer right above the handlebars. But that's a stupid amount of money for something that's seemingly pretty simple. I guess there's cheaper ones out there, but they're still like $100. But I made up my mind. I'm gonna build one and I'm gonna show you how. So I sat down at the computer and I made three plans of varying difficulty and I did this on purpose. If you want to do something very simple with straight cuts and easy fastening, then try the I stand. The C stand has a little bit of a different look, but it incorporates some 45 degree cuts and some angle braces. But this Z stand is the one I'm gonna build. The other two are perfectly fine. I just wanted to build something a little bit more complicated. As before, I'm providing a link to lunchridemtb.com where you'll be able to download the plans I've made for all three of these stands. This time, I've really gone all out. There's cut lists, board layouts, and imperial dimensions as well as metric. So there. So for the stand that I'm building, all I really need are four eight foot two by fours and a sheet of half inch plywood. Actually, as long as it's two foot by two foot, that's really all you need. But you can buy a pre-cut two foot by four foot piece at a Home Depot or Lowe's, and then that will give you enough for the six inch shelf that goes underneath and some little feet to make it a little bit more stable on the ground. I will be using pocket screws to build this stand. If you're building either of the other two stands, you can use three inch screws for the main supports and inch and a quarter drywall screws to screw the plywood on. All of this material costs about $30. To make the most efficient use of the boards that we have, I've made a layout of pieces to cut in the plans. So I'm gonna mark out the boards to make sure that I don't waste anything. But I don't wanna cut everything until I'm sure that I have the largest and most important pieces cut correctly. Otherwise, I might wind up with a shortage and have to go back to the store. A good rule of thumb to maximize your material is to make sure that you cut the longest piece that you need from the shortest piece that you have. don't want to just start chopping all the short pieces that we need out of the material because it's easy then we might run out or make a mistake so let's make sure the longest pieces are cut right and going together well before we chop everything up now the dimensions are going to be two foot by two foot square with an overall height of 54 inches this should let it sit over the bike with enough room for you to actually use the handlebars I'm also going to make two cutouts for water bottles and a little shelf to place whatever Since I designed this with SketchUp, it's real easy for me to just design it and make it look how I want and then just pull measurements off the computer drawings. Okay, I was going to talk about how to calculate the length of this diagonal piece without using the CAD program, using a calculator and the Pythagorean theorem. But because of the way that I designed this, there's some other considerations that you have to take into account and it just makes it a very long-winded explanation and it just started to sound like a bunch of blowhard bullshit that you didn't want to hear anyway. However, if you are curious about how to do this or you have some questions about a project that you're building of your own, feel free to send an email to lunchridemtb at gmail.com and I'll be happy to try to answer some of those questions for you. Okay, so from the plans, I have two very important pieces of information that I need. One, that the cut at the top and the bottom needs to be an angle of 23.7, and then that the overall measurement that I need is 50 and a quarter inches. Now, I say the measurement that I need because it's not the total length, and I'll show you what I mean. 
So as you know, we've roughly marked out where the pieces go, but now we're gonna do it exact. So I'm gonna cut one angle first because this gives me a pointy end to hook my tape to. Measure down 50 and a quarter. So that's 50 and a quarter, but we have to remember that's the obtuse side of the angle, also known as the short point. So when we mark it at 24 degrees, that's our total length. If we had just cut it to 50 and a quarter, we would have been this short on our board. Also 23.7 degrees is a silly angle to try to cut. I'm just gonna aim for 24. The real important part is that the angle at the top and the bottom are exact. So I'm using a miter saw, but if you're cutting it by hand using a speed square and a hand saw or a circular saw, let me show you something you can do. So if we're using the speed square, this actually has a protractor on it these degrees here along this edge. And this is your pivot point there. So when you lay it on your board, we're gonna pivot here and get this at 24 degrees and then mark that there. Now to the best of my ability, I'm gonna take the saw and cut that line. That looks like a good 24 degrees. Now this is gonna be a template. If I use this at the top and bottom cuts and use this as a guide, the angle should be exact. Now here's the thing. We can fudge this angle and we can fudge the length of the legs. It's just as long as they match, as long as the angle is the same on the top and the bottom and the legs are the same length. If these angles don't match, then the top could tilt forward or backwards. We just need these parallel. That's all that's important. I'm gonna cut both of these together so I know they're exactly the same way. So now the important pieces are cut. I'm happy with them. So I can start cutting the other pieces. I need four pieces that are two feet long. These are the feet and the sides of the top. And then I need three cross braces that are 21 inches long. Now it's time to cut the leg braces. Now I do need to point out that these little braces have two different angles on them. So be careful of that when you're cutting them out. And they're 17 and 5 eighths from long point to long point. Now for the Craig jig. This is a pocket hole jig that you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's or Amazon. And it's about 99 bucks. There is a cheaper, more aggravating one for about $50. But this is really essential if you're doing any kind of cabinet making or furniture building. It's not the best for building ramps, but we're not building a ramp, we're just building a little desk. Layout looks good, it's coming together very well. Now I'm gonna use some screws and some glue to put it together. I'm gonna glue it, screw it, do both sides, and then join those up together. And now for the plywood top. 
I'm going to attach this with some inch and a quarter drywall screws. That'll be very easy. But first, before I do that, I'm going to put a couple holes here and here for water bottles. You can do that two ways. You can take a drill bit, drill a hole in there, and then take a jigsaw and run the jigsaw around and make a couple circles. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a hole saw. So I've laid out the holes according to my plan, and I've drilled a little pilot hole to help the hole saw guide into place. I've also put it on a disposable work table that I have, just a piece of plywood backing it up so that it doesn't splinter out completely on the backside when it goes through. There's one. These holes on the side are to leverage out the piece when you cut it out. Like that. Now that we got the top on here, just want to give it a quick sanding. Kind of chamfer the edges, roll them over a little bit. That helps reduce splinters that can happen in the future. Also just take down some of the splinters that might have happened uh, when we screwed the top down. And now that I got the top on, I'm going to turn it over on this table so I can attach the bottom shelf and the feet. Now I'm attaching feet to this because it's going to be out here in the garage on kind of an uneven concrete surface. If you're on carpet or something, it's not going to matter very much. But putting foot pads on it out here will help it keep from rocking a little bit. So I finished up the stand and it's ready to use. It seems really tall right now just sitting at it, but I know that once I've set the bike up with it, it's going to seem a little bit more to scale. So now that it's all set up, I think that the height is good because even if I put another climbing block under here, I'll still have room to keep my hands on the hoods. Well, my name's Cody and you're watching Lunch Ride. If you liked this video, if you thought it was helpful, hit like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Until next time.